you know, uh, let's have a word of prayer. Lord, thank you for, uh, you know, you have uh, tied us through the year and it's now a Thanksgiving uh, holiday again and uh, just thank you that uh, you bless us and uh, you bless everyone that we know of. Thank you, Lord Jesus, uh, and come to you and ask you to be with us tonight and uh, speak to us by the word of God. In the name of Jesus, amen. All right. Uh, yeah, let's have a good study. Thank you. Uh, today is uh, Thanksgiving Friday. And uh, actually, uh, the Hanukkah uh, for this year will begin this Sunday and uh, end on the, the week after. Uh, but anyway, today is Friday, 26 November, 2021. So uh, we're going to have a Bible study um, so that we can put online and then share with other people as well. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, the title, the title of the uh, study is Why uh, Yeh Shed, Why Yeh Shed. And uh, it's four letter. Actually, uh, the first letter Y is uh, means N. So N, you know, you know, the Torah uh, people, you know, they, they translate uh, to mean he settled, but uh, uh, it's more like and drilled and drill, you know. So three letters are drilling, and uh, the first letter is N, you know. I mean, Y means uh, N, you know. And uh, so we're going to uh, cover some portion uh, from chapter 37 to 40. Uh, that uh, all the uh, uh, people in synagogues, uh, they would uh, cover those letter, uh, those uh, chapters in Genesis, as well as uh, Amos, the prophet Amos. And uh, here's a summary. Uh, what happened is uh, basically 37, 38, 39. Uh, it's uh, actually from 37 on to the end of the uh, book of Genesis is uh, more about Joseph, Joseph. And uh, so uh, there is one chapter, kind of like intermission is uh, chapter 38, is a, is a chapter for Judah. Uh, so, uh, you know, we're going to touch on it. Uh, but uh, mostly uh, today, uh, we're going to cover Joseph, you know, the story of Joseph, because um, uh, in, in the previous weeks, uh, we have covered quite a number of um, the people in uh, Genesis, you know, we have covered Esau and uh, also about Sarah and also about Jacob and uh, even Isaac, you know, and, uh, and uh, actually Ishmael too, you know, so uh, we have covered a, a number of the characters, but, uh, you know, because uh, Genesis have, you know, from 37 on to chapter 50, is uh, almost like one third of the uh, book of Genesis is about Joseph. So um, uh, we're going to spend uh, today uh, talk about Joseph. And this is the uh, the beginning section of the uh, Torah portion. So I'm going to read for you, and uh, it's uh, from chapter 37, verse 1 to 11. And Jacob dwelt in the land wherein his father was a stranger in the name of Canaan. These are the generations of Jacob. Joseph, being 17 years old, was feeding the flock with his brother, Reuben, and the lad was with the sons of Bilhah and with the son of Siba, his father's wife. And Joseph brought unto his father their evil report. Now Israel loved Joseph more than all his children, because he was the son of his old age. And he made him a coat of many colors. And when his brethren saw that their father loved him more than all his brethren, they hated him and could not speak peaceably unto him. And Joseph dreamed a dream. And he told it uh, his brethren, and they hated him yet even more. And he said unto them, here, I pray you, this dream which I have dreamed, for behold, we were binding sheep 
in the field, and lo, my sheep arose and also stood upright. And behold, your sheep stood round about and made obeisance to my sheep. And his brethren said to him, Shall thou indeed reign over us, or shall thou indeed have dominion over us? And they hated him yet the more for his dreams and for his words. And he dreamed yet another dream and told it his brethren and say, Behold, I have dreamed a dream more. And behold, the sun and the moon and the eleven stars make obeisance to me. And he told it to his father and to his brethren. And his father rebuked him and said unto him, What is this dream that thou have dreamed? So I and thy mother and thy brethren indeed come to bow down ourselves to thee, to the earth. And his brethren envy him, but his father observed the same. Now, so uh, by that time, you know, uh, Benjamin is already born uh, because, uh, you know, he talked about 11 brethren. And uh, but Benjamin was a very young uh, um, you know, a boy, you know, so to speak. So, uh, and, uh, but, you know, at the same time, you know, because uh, Rachel already died, you know, uh, Rachel was the uh, mother of Joseph and Benjamin, you know, uh, Rachel died. Uh, like in last week, uh, we talked about Rachel died when uh, Benjamin was born. Uh, and so, uh, it's kind of, you know, uh, a little, you know, strange, you know, the, 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 especially the second dream, because, you know, uh, it's, uh, you know, uh, according to Jacob's uh, interpretations, is uh, the sun meaning Jacob and the moon is Rachel, but Rachel already died. So, you know, this is, uh, you know, uh, it's a really uh, special dream. You know, of course, uh, you know, Joseph have no control over the dream, you know, but, you know, uh, he just share, you know, um, without knowing the consequence and all that, you know, but uh, yeah, young people are like that, you know, they, they just talk, you know. And um, so what happened was, um, uh, you know, he, you know, bring out the uh, dreams and then told the brothers and they hated him. And uh, told the father and the father uh, did uh, rebuke him, uh, not believing what he said, but at the same time, he. Uh, he uh, kept that in mind, uh, you know, in his heart, you know, about, uh, you know, his son Joseph that he loved. Now, uh, you know, uh, right off the bat, you know, I already put the title on, you know, Joseph is a picture of Jesus, you know. And, uh, you know, I, I, I believe that is really the case, but, uh, you know, we're going to read some more. And uh, it's in the same chapter, you know, but uh, at near the end of the chapter, basically the brethren, are going to uh, betray uh, Joseph, you know, uh, 10 brothers, okay, because uh, Benjamin was too young, and first of all, and also Benjamin had the same mother, and so, you know, there's no reason uh, Joseph or Benjamin hate each other. But uh, the other 10 uh, uh, were born by different mothers, and so uh, they you know, obviously I have no compunctions uh, to uh, hurt Joseph, especially because uh, Joseph uh, talked about these kind of dreams, you know, and uh, they, they resent it, yeah. But anyway, I'm gonna read uh, the, you know, uh, near the end part of the chapter 37, uh, from 23 on. And it came to pass when Joseph was uh, come unto his brethren, that they stripped Joseph out of his coat and his coat of many colors that was on him. And they took him and cast him into a pit. And the pit was empty. There was no water in it. And they sat down to eat bread and they lifted up their eyes and looked. And behold, a company of Israelites came from Gilead with their camels bearing spicy and balm and uh, myrrh. Uh, and going to carry it down to Egypt. And Judah said unto uh, uh, his uh, brethren, what uh, prophet, what prophet is it uh, if we slay our brother 
and conceal his blood. Come and let us sell him to the Israelite, and let not our hands be upon him, for he is our brother and our flesh, and his brethren will contend. Then there passed by median like merchantmen, and they drew and lift up Joseph out of the pit, and sold Joseph to the Israelite for 20 pieces of silver. And they brought Joseph into Egypt. And Reuben returned unto the pit, and behold, Joseph was not in the pit, and he ran his clothes, and we, he returned uh, unto his brethren, and said, The child is not, and I whither shall I go? And they took Joseph's coat and killed a kid of the goats, a young goat, a baby goat, and dipped the coat in the blood. And they went, sent the coat to of many colors, and they brought it to their father and said, This have we found. Know not whether it be thy son's coat or not. And he knew it and said, It is my son's coat. And evil beasts have devoured him. Joseph is without doubt ran into pieces, and Jacob ran his clothes and put a sackcloth upon his lawns and mourned for his son many days. And all his sons and all his daughters rose to comfort him, but he refused to be comforted. And he said, For I will go down into the grave unto my son mourning. Thus his father wept for him. So uh, this is uh, the, um, the part that um, uh, we told the story that Joseph was sold uh, to be a slave, and, uh, but also disappeared from the uh, family as if he died. Uh, but basically his father believed that, you know, uh, uh, he, he has been killed by an animal, some animals. And uh, so, you know, his, uh, his son, you know, that uh, Joseph, that he loved, and uh, he uh, is no more. Now, uh, you know, this, uh, this, uh, there are many parts uh, that they are showing some, uh, some of those uh, pictures, pictures, and uh, one of them is uh, the median, the median light, the median light. Uh, uh, in this case, uh, was uh, responsible for selling uh, or buying and selling Joseph as a slave. And uh, uh, well, you know, uh, so what's that mean? You know, uh, and how is that a picture of Jesus? Well, you see the median light uh, come from the uh, land of median. The land of median, uh, you know, in the last few weeks, uh, we have talked about that. The land of median is uh, where Moses, uh, you know, spent his uh, 40 years in the desert. And, uh, you know, he married uh, a wife, which is a median like uh, priest. And so he married a median like. And, uh, and then uh, the last 40 years, uh, he was sent out as a, as a prophet by, by the law uh, to be the, uh, the, the, the Moses, the, the law giver. So, you know, he, uh, he, uh, he was responsible for uh, bringing uh, from, uh, from the uh, Mount Sinai, which is actually the medium. You know, we already uh, uh, have uh, found it and certified it, you know, in the previous <laughs> uh, Bible studies, you know, that uh, uh, the, uh, the uh, Mount Sinai is in Arabia, is in Arabia, according to Galatians, you know. So, uh, so, uh, you know, so the, all this story is uh, showing, you know, the fact is that uh, Jesus was, uh, was uh, uh, betrayed uh, by the 10 brothers, which is uh, 10 uh, represent the LEW, and also is uh, under the condemnations of the uh, law of Moses, the Mount Sinai, the 10 commandments, okay? And, and uh, so, you know, and uh, so he was basically uh, disappear along with the, um, uh, you know, interestingly, you know, the camel was bearing uh, spice and balm and mirth. You know, some uh, translations say uh, spice, uh, frankincense and mirth. You know, well, I mean, uh, yeah, you know, when uh, Jesus was born, uh, king of the Jew, and uh, the, the uh, wise men from the east uh, brought uh, the gold, the frankincense and mirth. You know, 
And uh, so uh, they signify things, you know. And uh, the spies, um, you know, uh, when uh, Jesus was um, ready to uh, go to the cross, you know, there, there was uh, the account of the woman and uh, maybe Mary, you know, that, that uh, she uh, carried the uh, alabaster uh, of uh, spice uh, to uh, anoint uh, Jesus uh, and his feet. And uh, what Jesus said was that uh, she was uh, preparing him for burial. So this uh, spice is for, for, the, for his death, you know, to uh, know that uh, the fact that uh, he, he was going to be um, uh, the sacrifice uh, for the sin of the world. And then not only that, you know, that, you know when uh, Jesus died, you know, and uh, the, uh, you know, there was uh, Nicodemus and, uh, you know, Joseph of uh, our, our Matthew, that uh, they bought, they carry uh, uh, about a hundred pounds, you know, a, a great amount of earth. You know, because uh, in the ancient time, in Egypt, ancient time, and also in uh, in the ancient Hebrew, um, you know, the, the Israel, uh, you know, Middle East time, you know, they uh, they use nerve to embalm the body, you know, after death. So, uh, you know, all this uh, is a picture of, uh, you know, that uh, Joseph is a picture of Jesus. Yeah. And then, of course, uh, he was sold as a slave. He was sold as a slave. You know, he had no clothes on. Just like when he was on the cross, he had no clothes on because uh, he became poor so that we can we can uh, be um, uh, blessed with uh, his riches in heaven. So, um, you know, uh, you know, all those things that he did on the cross, you know, was, uh, was um, you know, uh, you know, a reversal of the curse uh, from the first Adam uh, because uh, he uh, carried the, um, you know, the strike, the first, the sickness, the, uh, you know, the uh, sin uh, for us so that uh, we can be blessed. But anyway, so uh, this, um, um, you know, picture of, um, of uh, 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 Joseph going into Egypt is like, you know, he was, he was, uh, he has suffered uh, so much, you know, uh, as a slave. And uh, I'm sure uh, they were uh, weeping. Uh, they were, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know make uh, sh shame, you know, and curse on him, you know, and uh, treated like a, uh, like a, you know, animal and, and all that, you know, and uh, so, so uh, Jesus was the, did it all for us uh, in so many ways and the suffering hurt and, uh, you know, to even have no, no way out, you know, because, uh, you know, he, uh, he suffered furthermore, furthermore in Egypt, you know, uh, being betrayed, uh, you know, in different ways, you know, uh, but anyway, he, uh, but then he uh, rise from that, you know, to to be the second in command in uh, Egypt, and uh, so you know it's kind of like the same same story about uh, Jesus, our Lord, that uh, he uh, he uh, after he was buried, you know, in the deep, and uh, but you know he uh, he risen to heavens, he risen to heaven and to be the second um, in in the uh, in the in heavens, you know, sitting next to the uh, on the right hand of the Father, our Lord, our God. So anyway, uh, interestingly, you know, uh, you know, uh, Jacob was saying, "For I will go down into the grave unto my son, morning." Yeah, in the Old Testament times, you know, the uh, the uh, even the saints, you know, or, or you know, um, those people that believe God and so forth, uh, they they um, they have not been uh, liberated yet. You know, so uh, they go into the grave, you know. Uh, I, I mean, for a better term, you know, they go to the bosom of Abraham. <laughs> yeah, so to be with Abraham, because uh, until Jesus uh, was uh, crucified and dead and uh, was buried uh, and uh, and then risen, um, you know, he, uh, he uh, have not liberated them, uh, you know, um, so, so to speak, you know, he had not liberated the, you know, the, uh, the, the Hades, the sure. Uh, in fact, you know, that grave, the word grave here, right here, the word grave is the uh, same word as the uh, shield. And, uh, of course, and uh, also uh, same, same spelling as Saul, S-A-U-L, King Saul. And uh, 
So uh, that is, uh, you know, there's uh, some of the study that we have done before, you know, that uh, uh, the old covenant um, cannot uh, go beyond the, uh, the grave. You know, the old covenant, uh, you know, without, without Jesus can, can, uh, can only end up in grave. Yeah, because uh, only Jesus uh, have died and, and uh, bring us, uh, give us life and uh, to give us eternal life. Yeah. So at the end of this uh, study, you know, today we're going to have a, a holy communion. So uh, we commemorate his death and uh, to receive his life and blessing. Uh, but uh, that is, uh, you know, near the end of the chapter <laughs> in the study. Okay. Uh, so 37 is basically uh, talking about his uh, youth and uh, his relationship with the family, and then also uh, talking about his betrayal, betrayal by his uh, 10 brothers. You know, it's kind of like another hint uh, about the 10 commandments uh, uh, to, to, to uh, you know, to be, uh, you know, recent on, on Joseph and uh, as a picture of Jesus. Now, so in chapter 38 is, um, the, you know, the uh, uh, writer, you know, uh, of the uh, Genesis and uh, that is gone. And, uh, but by the hand of Moses, you know, he, uh, he um, yeah, apparently uh, want to talk about Judah. So after Joseph is gone, as if he died, you know, so it's the uh, same way after Jesus was gone, um, you know, and uh, dead, burial, but he was alive again, you know. So, uh, you know, after Joseph is gone, you know, in chapter 37, and like Jesus was gone, you know, from, from the earth. And uh, so the, to the people of Israel, to, from the, to the children of Israel, uh, he, he seems to be no more. And that's what Jacob said, you know, he's crying to the grave. Now, so Judah, uh, you know, have his own story. And uh, this story is very interesting because uh, Judah uh, left his home, left his uh, uh, brothers, and then uh, went out to the world, you know, and uh, to, uh, to uh, uh, you know, uh, met somebody, you know, which is a Gentile, you know, uh, a Canaanite. And then he, uh, because, uh, you know, he, he was out in the world, you know, he married a, a Canaanite, and, uh, uh, you know, his daughter, uh, you know, uh, but his name is called Shia. Shia is, uh, means wealth. So anyway, so Judah went out into the world and he married the riches of the world. And uh, that was like in uh, verse 2 of chapter uh, 38, okay? And then in uh, verse 3, 4, and 5, you know, uh, is re recorded that, you know, with that wife, the, the, the wife, you know, the, whose father is wealth, uh, uh, she had uh, three sons, uh, three sons. And then, you, you know, it was uh, given the name. Um, interestingly, you know, in all, all three uh, verses, you know, three, four, and five, uh, the name of Jesus' signature was um, mentioned along the way. And so it's as if, um, you know, the name was actually given by, by the law. Uh, but anyway, so the first one is called Earl. The second one is called Onan. The third one is called Sheila. And, <laughs> and then, you know, it turned out, you know, if you, uh, you look up the, um, you know, either Bible Hub or something and then, after a while, you will find out, you know, uh, the, the first word, uh, Earl, means enemy. And the second son is called Ona, which means uh, strength or success. And the third one uh, is, uh, is called Sheila. And uh, uh, he was born in a, a, a place called she Sip, or, you know, same word as Cosby, you know, which is another familiar name. Uh, because uh, in numbers, uh, when the uh, medium might try to seduce the uh, me, uh, Simeon, right, uh, the, the, the prince uh, of the medium, the princess of medium is called Cosby. Uh, but apparently, uh, it, you know, uh, over here is a land, it's a place, 
but over there was a was a, a, a medium like prince princess and uh, the, the the meaning of their uh, name is falsehood falsehood anyway so you know seems like all three were not uh, good names but what happened well um i i just uh, have to be honest you know and uh, of the law of course i uh, really love the uh, jewish people and uh, he want them uh, to all be safe but uh, they have to believe in Jesus, of course. But, you know, getting back here, you know, this is uh, the story of Judah. Judah is the progenitor of, um, you know, 4,000 years of uh, the Jewish history, Judah, right, Jews. And uh, so what happened is, apparently, you know, for, for the 4,000 years of history, uh, yeah, because uh, actually for 2,000 years, uh, after Jesus was go uh, gone to heaven, and uh, to Judah, uh, the, uh, the, the, the people of Judah, uh, they uh, had a, a war with the Romans in AD 70, and they were uh, uh, defeated. And as a result, Jerusalem was, uh, uh, you know, destroyed. And the temple was a uh, second time destroyed. And uh, no more, no more uh, the temple. And, uh, and then uh, the people, that uh, there were the leaders uh, in Jerusalem, so all the all the uh, scholars, all the uh, top people uh, of the uh, of the of that generation, uh, they were all captured and uh, to be slaves for for uh, for the Roman Empire in different parts of the world. And uh, so, as a result, uh, well, you know, on one hand, you know, the uh, the, uh, the Jewish people uh, had. Um, you know, uh, a lot of um, you know, leftover blessing uh, from uh, Abraham time, and uh, the Lord do not take away those uh, blessings. And uh, so, you know, uh, in a different part of the world, you know, they become rich, even though they were small nation or small uh, number of people, uh, but uh, they, they become wealthy. And uh, we all know that. So, you know, that's not an issue. And, uh, but and as a result of that, you know, during that um, 2,000 years of time, you know, between uh, the Jesus time and now, you know, um, many of them were persecuted. You know, uh, they, they did well financially, uh, they, or they did well in uh, whatever that uh, they have their hands on, you know, on a, in a, you know, different part of, um, you know, uh, the uh, world's uh, business. Uh, but at the same time, you know, apparently, uh, two out of three of the or, or Judah's son were killed by God. Now the first one is called enemy. Well, because uh, you know, uh, when uh, in the ancient times, and or even for that matter now, you know, uh, the the world the world is uh, uh, kind of enemy to God. So uh, Judah is no exception, you know, that uh, uh, they, even though they say they believe in God, but uh, they don't have the Savior. Uh, they did not have the Savior for the last 2,000 years. And, and so, you know, they are kind of like an enemy, like, just like the world people, you know, the world people worship idols and uh, false God. And, but, you know, the Jewish people, you know, they, they uh, say they believe in God, but uh, they don't have, uh, they don't have the Savior. So, you know, without the Savior, you know, um, you know, everyone is an uh, enemy to God. Yeah, because how, how can they save themselves? You know, no one can. But anyway, this is uh, the first one, you know, uh, the, uh, the name Earl, E R is an uh, enemy. And then the second son is called Onan. Onan uh, means uh, strength or success. Yeah, no question about that. The Jewish people have um, a lot of, um, you know, uh, know-how, strength, or success in their life, um, you know, for the last 2,000 years. Yes, they, they have been uh, uh, very successful in, uh, you know, their uh, different fields. And uh, for that matter, you know, the, uh, even though they are very small nation or, or people, a number of people, um, like now it's uh, about 15 million, um, you know, even Hong Kong has 7 million people. So, you know, so for as a people, uh, very small in numbers, 
and uh, but they have been very successful. And uh, the success was, was demonstrated by the fact that uh, uh, like the uh, Nobel Prize, to um, almost 25% uh, of it uh, on Nobel Prize were uh, taken by uh, Jewish uh, names. So, you know, I mean, obviously they have the strength and success. Uh, so, you know, this is Bible term, you know, this is the Bible, God's word. So, um, you know, I did not make it up. <laughs> uh, so that's a second name. But, you know, at the same time, you know, uh, seems like, you know, the law, you know, also uh, with the success, material success and uh, with, um, you, know, uh, you know, the outstanding, um, you know, uh, you know, professions, uh, professional lives, uh, but they they also uh, have been, uh, you know, uh, going through hardship, going through hardship, you know, in different part of the world. You know, they are persecuted and uh, they have been locked down on and so on and so on. So, yeah, so another son uh, died. And so there's only one son left, our free. From, from, from the world, you know, from the time in the world. Even though they are riches, they have um, success, and, uh, but, you know, because of this relationship or no relationship with God, you know, they, they are lost. Uh, so, uh, you know, they are suffering, they are cursed uh, from the old covenant. Now, so as a result, the third one uh, is not really a good name either, you know, deceive or falsehood. But anyway, so what happened? What happened was, as a result, you know, uh, I'm going to read the uh, verse 6 and 10. And Judah took a wife for Earl, his firstborn, whose name was Tamar. And Earl, Judah's firstborn, was wicked in the sight of the Lord. And the Lord slew him. And Judah said unto Onan, Go uh, in unto thy brother's wife and marry her. And raise up seed to thy brother. And Ona knew that the seed should not be his. It came to pass when he went into uh, his brother's wife that his spirit on the ground, lest that uh, he should give seed to his brother. And the thing which he did displeased the Lord, wherefore he slew him also. So, you know, as I said, you know, two hour free of the uh, Judah, you know, uh, sons. Uh, were killed by God. So it's kind of, it's kind of like, you know, in, in some manners, uh, despite the story of the 4,000 of the Jewish history, um, you know, I, I have to be frank about that, you know, because the law loved them, but the law, you know, have to, um, you know, have his uh, own righteousness. And then so, you know, uh, when they, they, you know, do not have the relationship, um, you know, as it should have been, uh, then, you know, um, you know, you can, nobody can fight God. You know. But anyway, uh, so continue on. And so as a result, you know, Tamar, Tamar became a widow, you know, because it was the, uh, the, the original wife of the uh, firstborn. And uh, so he was told, she, she was given uh, the second, second son and the, the second son trick check uh, her and uh, did not want to uh, pass along the 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 um, the, uh, the, uh, the uh, inheritance you know uh, he want to uh, have have you know his own son you know not not uh, to give up his uh, his uh, advantage you know uh, because uh, the first born already died but anyway so Tema Tema um, did not um, you know as a result, you know, and then he asked for the third son. And, uh, but Judah decided, you know, not to give uh, the first son to him because, uh, um, you know, because uh, Judah felt that, you know, maybe uh, Tamar is uh, too, you know, um, can, can cause the, the first son to die also, you know. And anyway, so, uh, so as a result, Tamar is in a really uh, bad shape because uh, in the ancient time, in uh, in the uh, old covenant time, you know, or or, or for that matter, Old Testament time, uh, the first commandment, uh, you know, after Adam and Eve was born, 
uh, the first commandment is be fruitful and multiply. So, you know, all the women in the ancient times, you know, they, they are aware of the fact that, you know, God told them to be fruitful and multiply. And that's why they have a, um, you know, a different kind of, a, um, you know, law for the family at that time. That, uh, you know, if the firstborn uh, die and the wife um, should, uh, conjugate with the second and then the third son and so forth, uh, in order so that uh, the, the family uh, would not uh, lost, you know, the names or the, the you know, the inheritance, you know, so, so that uh, they can, um, you know, have, uh, you, know, you know, branch out, you know, in their, as a, as a, but anyway, be fruitful and multiply. But Tamar could not because, uh, you know, because uh, the first two sons died and, uh, and uh, so, you know, she was in chain and uh, she was sent home by uh, Judah and uh, Judah didn't care about, you know, whatever happened to Tamar. But what happened was that uh, Judah, you know, he went out to find a prostitute, um, you know, and I guess it was known, you know, that um, he, Judah, you know, frequent, uh, the, you know, <laughs> with the um, with a place of prostitution. And uh, so as, as a result, you know, Tamar pretend to be positive, all just and all cover up, and then, um, you know, offer herself, you know, to have, to have a, you know, uh, the relationship. But, you know, Tamar's uh, intent was uh, to obey God's law, and then also uh, to, uh, to uh, you know, uh, poverty, you know, uh, to, uh, to benefit the, the house of Judah. Uh, but in the case of Judah, you know, he he, uh, he just, um, you know, <laughs> wanted to find a woman, <laughs> but uh, not, not um, you know, not knowing, you know, this is actually a, a, a daughter-in-law. So as a result, you know, she, uh, she, she asked for the signet, the bracelet, and the staff, because uh, uh, Judah uh, went to find a prostitute, but uh, she did, uh, he did not bring any money or gold, you know, at that time, you know, yeah, the gold uh, what could be used as some money. But, you know, so, so, you know, you can see, you know, this is uh, uh, what happened. And so I'm going to continue to read. And it came to pass about three months after that it was told Judah, saying, Tamar, you know, thy daughter-in-law had played the harlot. And also, behold, she is with child by order. And Judah said, Bring her forth and keep, burn her. Wow, you know, very judgmental. Let her be burned because uh, she 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 has uh, um, you know you know um, you know uh, play harlot. You know. And when she was brought forth, she sent to her father in law, said, "By the man whose this are, am I with child?" And she said, "Discern, I pray thee, whose are these the signet and bracelet and staff." Now, apparently, <laughs> Judah, you know, pay big, uh, great price, you know, because the signet uh, is like a mastercard, you know. Yeah, because uh, they use the signet uh, to stamp and then to, you know, to, to, uh, on all the clay documents. You know, in the old days, they don't have papers. And uh, so in order to, uh, you know, for them to pay for buying something or, you know, you know, uh, make some kind of decision, they use a signet. So sig the signet has, a, you know, some kind of sign and then showing that uh, uh, this is, um, you know, like his credit card, you know. But anyway, Judah gave up all that. <laughs> and so, so, so fortunately, uh, Tamar already got the evidence. And uh, so in uh, 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 26, verse 26, and, and Judah acknowledged him. And he said, she had been more righteous than I, because that I gave her not to Shayla, my third son, and he knew her again no more. Now, of course, you know, that's um, her, her daughter-in-law, which is in uh, Judah's eye and in God's eye, you know, she, uh, she is a very righteous person, you know, because she did it. Even shameful things, she did it for the, uh, for the house of Judah, and also uh, to uh, to uh, you know obey God's uh, commandments, you know, which is to be fruitful and multiply. 
And anyway, so um, 27, and it came to pass in the time of her travail that behold, trains were in her, her womb. And it came to pass when she travailed that the one put out his hands and the midwife took and bound upon his hand a scarlet fur, saying, this came out first. You know, this, uh, the one with the scarlet fur is the firstborn. And it came to pass as he drew back his hand that behold, his brother came out. So the younger brother came out first. <laughs> and she said, how hast thou broken forth this bridge be upon thee? Therefore, his name was called Ferris. Paris, Perez, yeah, meaning breakthrough, you know, makes sense. And after we came out with his brother, that had the scarlet thread upon his hand, and his name was called Sarah. Sarah means a uh, native or natural. Well, you know, so it goes. Now, so how come, how come uh, Ju Judah's story is in the middle of uh, the story of Joseph, you know? Um, it's very interesting, very interesting. But let's uh, finish the Judah story first. So what we have read is Tamar uh, means palm tree. Tamar means palm tree. And then we also read, whose are these? The signet, the bracelet and stuff, you know, showing, you know, well, in fact, uh, that's how, you know, uh, Jesus come about because Tamar is one of the four women. The four women are uh, in the genealogy of Jesus in Matthew chapter one. Uh, the account of the uh, genealogy of Jesus. There yeah, are four women. Those four women were not uh, uh, there because of their, their you know, uh, good deed. Those four women were looked down on. Uh, they did something, you know, kind of uh, shameful to other people or to themselves. But they did it. They did it somehow because of their faith or because they somehow want to honor God. You know, so Tamar did it. Even pretend to be positive uh, in order to propagate the house of Judah. And so Jesus is come out from Tamar. So that's why. He, she is one of the four women, <laughs> one of the four women who brought about the Lion of Judah. Jesus, the Lion of Judah, you know, because uh, the signets, the bracelet and the star signify that, you know, he, he, the person and the descendant, the seed have the power, the authority of the law, because Jesus is the law. But anyway, verse 26, and Judah acknowledged them. Yes, this uh, daughter-in-law of my firstborn son was, had been more righteous than Judah himself. Yes, he recognized it. He confessed it. But anyway, so, um, you know, this is uh, one of those... Uh, uh, really, you know, good turnaround for Tamar, but also for the house of Judah. Because uh, out from there, you know, these uh, two twins, uh, also, you know, it's um, a story about the first and the last, the last that we come first. You know, it's uh, that uh, Perez, Perez is, uh, you know, uh, the younger one. Turn out, you know, he become, you know, the one that was, uh, that was the, uh, the, um, the ancestor also of Jesus. Yeah. Well, is it it? No, no. You know, because uh, Jesus had uh, in his ministry, he always mentioned that the, uh, the, the, the first will be last and the last be first. So spiritually, there's something about that, you know. Well, you know, the, you know, the fact is uh, the old covenant uh, was superseded by the new covenant. You know, those people that go back to the old covenant um, is not going to get any good, you know, because uh, because the new covenant is heavenly. The old covenant is trying to do things on earth. You know, when you try to do things on earth, you cannot point up to heavens. But by the Lord Jesus, by the new covenant, 
the new covenant is Jesus. The old covenant is uh, Moses. So you can no one can climb the ladder to heavens because the ladder to heaven is Jesus Christ. So so you know so uh, Jesus have many times you know he he said that the first become the last and the last become first and uh, it's um, revealed so many times in the Old Testament Bible that the younger one you know the new covenant would uh, replace the old covenant and this is another time <laughs> All right, uh, enough of that. Now, but uh, I, I just want to show you. Uh, yes, uh, Tamar's name means uh, erect, but it also means uh, palm tree. Look, all the palm tree in the world is uh, very straight. Even if they bend a little bit, they still hold up upright, you know, righteous standing. You know, they, they can stand wind, they can stand the weather, they can stand tall, you know, Tamar. Tamar's name is the, means the erect, but it also, you know, what present a picture of the uprightness, good righteous standing before God, you know, so Tamar. Now, but, you know, uh, and, and, you know, of course, uh, we are talking and studying the Bible, so uh, we have to talk about that. You know, there's another kind of righteousness. The other kind of righteousness is man's righteousness, and uh, and uh, how, what what is the picture of that? Well, the first plant, the first plant mentioned in the Bible, is the fig leaves. The fig leaves is uh, is uh, is uh, used by Adam and Eve to cover themselves when they heard the voice of God, looking voice of the Lord, looking for them. The Lord said, where are you? Where are you? That was the first question. Where are you? And 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 so you know they use fig leaves to cover themselves. Because why? Because the fig leaves represent the righteousness of men trying to cover themselves, you know, for their shame. For you know, uh, I didn't do this. I didn't take that, uh, I didn't steal that. You know, so so man's righteousness is uh, using fake leaves. You know, it's a picture of the man's righteousness as opposed to the the God's righteousness. Okay, um, so uh, there were many, many, many times. You know, remember when uh, Jesus was challenged by uh, the uh, uh, the leaders in uh, Jerusalem, and uh, you know he uh, they remind him. You know they. Uh, Pilate killed a, a bunch of Galileans because Jesus is uh, with with the disciple there are Galileans and then he also is from Nazareth which is a, a you know a, a city in Galilee and uh, so so uh, you know Jesus told them you know if they don't repent they would die just like that so 40 years later when the Romans uh, come uh, come on to the revolt of the of the Jewish people in AD 70 and uh, a lot of them die just like that you know by the altar because they, they try to hold on to the altar uh, thinking you know God have to bless them and protect them because uh, they're holding on the temple holding on to the altar but so their blood also commingle just like you know what those Galileans uh, when they were killed by Pilate, their blood commingled with the uh, sacrifice. And then, you know, Jesus reminded them also the second second uh, example was that uh, uh, you you know that uh, there, uh, there was a, a tower at Siloam and then uh, it fall down and killed many. Uh, you know, those are Jerusalem people. And uh, so Jesus was telling them, you know, unless you repent, repent about what? Not the sin. They, unless you repent about not uh, not believing Jesus, uh, you know Jesus told them already, you know, and they should know that that uh, Jesus is the savior, uh, not just for the world but also for the people in uh, Israel, for the Jewish people, and uh, unless you repent, 
um, you know, they will be like I like that too. Good. So 40 years later, a lot of people in Jerusalem uh, die like that, you know, and then the remainder become slave for the uh, Roman Empire. Yeah, because all the all the towers in Jerusalem all collapsed because of the Roman uh, uh, invasion. You know, everything was destroyed. Not just the temple, the whole Jerusalem was destroyed. And that's why most of the debris, all the archaeological uh, things, um, you know, 20 years below, it's 20 feet below, you know, all the all the buildings that you see in Jerusalem nowadays um, are built on top of the uh, of the destruction of Jerusalem. You know, they are not the original buildings. Okay, but anyway, so right after that, you know, Jesus uh, told them about uh, there's a vineyard. There's a vineyard in, uh, uh, you know, uh, there's a you know there's an owner and also there's a gardener, and the owner is God. And the gardener is Jesus. And then God told Jesus, you know, they have been, uh, you have been uh, gardening around this fig tree in the vineyard. And then there's no fruit. Let's cut it down. And the, the, and the gardener said, well, yeah, two years, uh, but, you know, let's uh, wait a little longer. If, um, if uh, I put a tongue around them, and then uh, at next year, still no fruit then we'll cut it down. You remember that story? It's uh, you know, all, all in the same, same uh, passage. And, and so what happened is uh, when, when Lord Jesus told them that story, it was his third year of ministry. And then so uh, after the spring, and then in springtime, he was going to the cross. And then on the last week that he saw the, fig tree that has no fruit, you know, on the way to the temple. And then, and then he said, from here on, no one eat your fruit. And then the next day, you know, when Peter saw it and say, um, Lord, uh, the one that you curse, the fig tree that you curse, and they, they have died from the root up. Yeah, talk, it's talking about the righteousness of man. Yeah, the righteousness of men try to cover themselves. They talk big, you know, saying they can save themselves, bless themselves. You know, they reject Jesus or they they uh, they belittle Jesus. You know, unless you repent, unless you repent, you know, maybe not 40 years. In time, unless people repent, then, you know, the die, time they will die and, uh, and their life is no more. So, you know, this is a, you know, a reminder, you know, the Lord Jesus wants to save us and bless us. It's already paid. Yeah, thank you, Jesus. So fast forward, you know, uh, we already know a Joseph story, you know, and I think most people that attend church uh, sometime, you know, or Sunday school sometime, they already know the long story of Joseph, you know. So Joseph uh, suffered a lot, you know, went to uh, Egypt, you know, uh, be a slave and then, uh, you know, pay a, you know, a lot of, um, um, you know, bear a lot of sufferings and then uh, he was betrayed, he was rejected, he was in jail, you know. And then uh, even, uh, even the two guys, uh, uh, the one that was uh, uh, blessed uh, by his uh, dream explanation and all that, you know, did not remember him. A number of time, and uh, I, I mean a number of years, and uh, so, but eventually Joseph uh, become the uh, second second in command in uh, next to Pharaoh. It's like Jesus uh, become the second second on the right hand of the Father in heaven. Now, you know he's seated on the right hand, and that's why you know when we look unto Jesus, uh, we are with him, and uh, he's with us. As he is in heaven, so are we in this world. So, uh, so uh, you know, I just want to bring it to near the end, you know, because uh, Genesis 48, 49, 30, 30, uh, 50 is the end of the book of Genesis. And uh, 
So what happened was that uh, when Israel, well, you know, his name uh, was uh, most time is Jacob, but uh, now is Israel, you know, because uh, uh, in uh, 48 uh, and 49, you know, uh, Jacob is about to die. And then the first thing he did, you know, before he died, um, you know, he wanted to bless uh, the sons of Joseph. So I, I want to read for you, and then I will talk a little bit about what the meaning. Genesis 48, and Israel beheld Joseph's sons and said, who are these? And Joseph said unto his father, they are my sons, whom God had given me in this place in Egypt. And he said, bring them, I pray thee unto me, I will bless them. Now the eyes of Israel was dim for age, so that he could not see. And he brought them near unto him, and he kissed them, and embraced them. And Israel said unto Joseph, I had not thought to see thy face. And no, God has shown me also thy seed. And Joseph brought them out from between his knees, and he bowed himself with his face to the earth. And Joseph took them both, Ephraim in his right hand, taught Israel left hand, and Manasseh, in his left hand taught Israel right hand and brought them near unto him. And Israel stretched out his right hand and laid it upon Ephraim's head, who was the younger. And then his left hand upon Manasseh's uh, head, guiding his hands wittingly, like a cross, you know, cross, cross his hands. For Manasseh was the firstborn. Uh, and he blessed Joseph and said, God before whom my fathers Abraham and Isaac did walk, the God which fed me all my life long unto this day, the angel which redeemed me from all evil, bless the less, and let my name be named on them and the name of my fathers Abraham and Isaac, let them grow into the multitude in the midst of the earth. Wow. So what's that mean? What's that mean? Well, uh, we have studied this before, but uh, to make it short, Joseph at that time and, you know, uh, was is the governor, you know, second in command, like Jesus, you know, uh, you know, second in command in heaven, you know, to Father God. And Joseph Mary. uh, uh, the Egyptian woman. Uh, the Egyptian woman is the church. And and then so the uh, the two sons, you know, the uh, Manasseh and uh, uh, Ephraim, uh, the two sons actually um, part Egyptians. It's not hundreds of. Um, it's not full blood Hebrew. You know, they are they are Egyptian. So it's it's like us. You and I are, are children of God because why? Because uh, we are sons and daughter of God because of Jesus. Jesus married the church. You know, the church is the new, you know, the new blind, you know, forever. You know, it would never become old blind. You know, because uh, Jesus had one wife and that wife is the blind, is the church all the, the body of Christ. You know, everyone that believe in Jesus Christ as the Savior, we are all part of the body of Christ. And we are of one church and one faith. And uh, we look unto Jesus. <laughs> so so the Ephraim and Manasseh, they are the church, the church body. But it's very interesting. So, uh, you know, Jacob is uh, saying, hey, I want them to be my sons. Huh? What does that mean? Well, of course, you know that um, um, Manasseh and uh, Ephraim uh, later on become the 12 tribes. One of the, you know, two of the 12 tribes. So, so they become the organization. They belong to the kingdom of the law. You cannot say, Oh, uh, only the uh, Jewish people uh, can be in the 12 tribes. No, these two are, are, are the church. And it's Joseph. If Joseph is the picture of Jesus, then, then the wife 
is the church. You know, she's an Egyptian, so it's it's the Gentile church because the church is always a Gentile. <laughs> and then and then Ephraim and Manasseh is the church body, the body of Christ, which is you and me who believe in Jesus. We follow Jesus, we look unto Jesus. And uh, so 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 this is the picture of us. <laughs> so anyway, so Jacob. Uh, you know, uh, now become Israel. You know, Jacob is the hustler most of his life. But, you know, when he's about to die, he blessed in the name of God as a prince of God. Israel means a prince of God. You know, that he blessed his uh, two sons, his grandsons, but also two, two sons of Joseph and uh, to become his son. So, uh, you know, that's why they have a place in the 12th, the organization of the kingdom of the law. So when you say, seek ye first the kingdom of the law and his righteousness, we are already yes, because uh, we belong to Jesus. So we are already um, in God's eyes. Uh, we are sons and daughters of God. All right. Don't let those uh, religious leaders uh, mess up your, your, your mind. You know, we are sons and daughters of God because we believe in Jesus and Jesus hold us in, in his hand and the Father hold us in his hand. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Oh boy, I'm just happy. Oh, how come I put it in, uh, in the new, new, uh, Okay, yeah, I, I got the Chinese and now I got the English. Okay, so uh, this is, uh, that was uh, uh, the blessing on the two tribes, uh, the blessing of the two Gentile church and uh, become part of the, um, the, the, uh, the kingdom of the Lord. Now, in, uh, in then uh, moving on, um, Jacob is uh, almost going to die. And then uh, before he died, you know, he uh, uh, used chapter 49 to uh, bless, uh, quote, you know, talk about the last day, last day of the uh, country of the world. And uh, so 49, you know, there was a well, verse, it is 49 verse 22 and talk about Joseph. So I'm going to read and then I'm going to explain it. Joseph is a fruitful bow, even a fruitful bow by a well whose branches run over the wall. Remember, uh, well, I'm going to read the, the John also, John, Gospel of John. John chapter four, four, four to seven. He, he must meet, go through Samaria, then come he to a city of Samaria, which is called Sychar, near to the parcel of the ground that Jacob gave to his son, Joseph. Now Jacob's well was there, Jesus, therefore, being weary with his journey, sat thus on the well, and it was about the six hours. There comes a woman of Samaria to join water. Jesus said unto her, give me to drink. And then you know the story. You know, this is the Samaritan woman. And then Jesus told her that I am the Messiah. And then she found out, you know, that she know, he know everything about her. <laughs> he know everything about her. So, you know, she, she believed. Jesus is the Messiah. And then she went back to the city of Samaria and then tell everybody else, come and see, you know, he is the Messiah. He is the Messiah. He talked with me and he know everything about me. And, and so as a result, uh, near the uh, gospel, uh, well, in the same chapter, and, and, and you know, in the you know, and, and other part of you know, uh, it's um, and many of the Samaritan of that city believe on him for the saying of the woman which testified. He told me all that I ever did. So when the Samaritan will come unto him, they besought him that he would tarry with them. He abode there two days. Uh, you know, that means two thousand years, and many more believe because of his own word, and said unto the woman, the woman is actually a picture of the church. Now we believe, not because of thy saying, for we have heard him ourselves, and we know that this is indeed the Christ, the Savior of the world. Well, where where do I begin? Well, 
the beginning was uh, when Joseph was uh, prophesied by Jacob. Joseph is a fruitful bough, even a fruitful bough by a whale whose branches went over the wall. So, so uh, when Jacob was about to die, and uh, he said this of Joseph, Joseph is a fruitful bough, you know, so it's a branch with a lot of fruit, a lot of fruit. But this branch is not um, uh, just stay inside the garden. It just reach out over a wall, over a wall. The, it branches out over the wall. Why? Because, um, you know, uh, anyone, you know, that has fruit tree, you know, they want to uh, keep that inside the garden so that they can consume it. They can enjoy it. They can see it, you know, but they they would rather not, you know, you know well, by human nature, they would rather not to, you know, uh, let the branches go over the wall, you know, because outside the wall, you know, other people can consume it, right? Yeah. So, you know, that's the same way, you know, the um, in the Old Testament, the Jewish people kept the uh, religion and faith inside their own garden. You know, they don't want to share that with, uh, you know, they're supposed to, but uh, they have not uh, done uh, much uh, sharing the, uh, the, uh, the, 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 the faith and religion. Yeah, you know, even uh, Jonah was told to, to preach <laughs> to the enemy, you know. <laughs> Jonah did not like that at all. <laughs> but, uh, you know, it's in general, you know, it is human nature, so you cannot blame uh, the Jew too much, you know, because uh, we all like that. <laughs> because before we understand Jesus, you know. So, but anyway, so Joseph is a fruitful bow. So, so this is talking about, you know, uh, that one time and one place, you know, that the fruitful bow tree branches out over the wall by a well. Uh, so that is the story, and that is the story about John chapter uh, chapter four. About chapter four, because uh, the uh, Samar woman of Samaria to join water, you know that woman is the church, and then so as a result, you know she is the you know kind of like the first uh, Gentile woman, and uh, Jesus, uh, um, you know, reach out. Um, Con converse with her and then tell her that uh, she he is the Messiah and then so you know as a result you know the uh, uh, she returned to the city and then bring about the uh, the the the, uh, the the Gentiles the Samarit Samaritans and then so many believe yes and then so they asked him to stay two days and that two days means two thousand years. Um, you know, I, I, I cannot spend too much time about that, but, uh, you know, that's why, you know, even though uh, Adam was supposed to, to die in the same day that uh, he, uh, he seen, but, you know, actually Adam uh, lived to um, almost a thousand years. And then also Moses said that, you know, to God, you know, a, a day is a thousand years and a thousand years is a day. Same thing for Peter in Second Peter, you know, so in God's eyes, in uh, God's time song, you know, there is no limit to God's time. You know, a day is a thousand years. And so same, same, same thing here. So, uh, you know, I have biblical words, you know, words uh, to, to prove that. But anyway, so uh, what does that mean? Well, that means that in our end time, we have to look, we have to hear from Jesus. We have look unto Jesus. You know, we, we don't need the, the middleman. You know, we, we, we're not, uh, uh, you know, uh, leading uh, the, the church in the, as a middleman. You know, we, we, in the last days, you know, we should hear from his own word. We should hear, you know, because uh, when we see that he, you know, his uh, he, you know, his miracle and signs are real. When we listen to his word and get impressed, you know, because this is God's word, then then we know that, you know, the Christ is the savior of the world. Yes. So, uh, so, so this is uh, chapter 49. Now, so having said that, you know, so this is the problem with the church. The church uh, is focusing a lot. The church is focusing a lot 
uh, to uh, you know the world things. You know they are not focusing on Jesus at all. So, well, you know what's the focus of Jesus? Jesus wants to save the world, not just uh, save a, a few member of the church. You know, a lot of time, you know, you you look at uh, how the church operate. They they talk about parties. They talk about the governance. They talk about you know every, anything in the world. You know, all this culture, all these uh, things uh, that look good on in front of people. But you know, uh, and and I hate to say that you know, uh, particularly in the case of Europe, the Europe. Uh, this is November twenty fourth. You know, two days ago, uh, you you see most of the high. Uh, sickness, you know, the daily sickness. Uh, you you hear it, of, of course, you already hear that uh, uh, Europe is uh, pretty high in uh, sickness in the COVID. Uh, let, let me show it to you on the real one. Uh, so uh, let's see if uh, it works. Well, this is the five continents, and uh, this is uh, yesterday, 25th. You know, you cannot have a November 26th today because uh, because this is the daily report. You know, so so uh, it's always one day late. Uh, this is the daily report. Yeah. So uh, this is the co uh, confirmed death, seven day rolling average. So uh, it's like virtually uh, like a daily death, and uh, Europe is uh, rising. A lot, see, you know, used to be Europe and North America just kind of much closer, uh, you know, much closer over here. But now, you know, it's rising. So, so it seems like Europe is in uh, bad shape. Uh, and then also, I, I I learned that you know they have a new uh, variant called uh, Omicron. Omicron is uh, from South Africa, and so, but. You know, Euro is still rising anyway from Delta. So, uh, you know, uh, they really need uh, God's help. Uh, but North America and South America, actually South America is kind of calm down now because uh, they have so much death, you know, uh, last, you know this uh, last summer because uh, they did not have uh, much, um, uh, you know, uh, vaccine uh, previous time, you know, so, uh, so uh, they have much, they have the highest death, you know, I think uh, uh, the total death is the uh, highest in uh, South America. Let's take a look. Yeah, South America is much higher uh, because uh, they are very religious, but uh, they also uh, uh, do a lot have much, they are, they are poor. They are trying to do good works, you know, but uh, religious people do good work uh, cannot bless them. So North America and Europe is um, uh, lower, which is better than South America. But, you know, still, you know, um, the trouble is, you know, the uh, churches, the churches, uh, they are not focusing on Jesus. They are not looking to Jesus for healing, blessing, miracles. Um, they try to rely on their own hands. Yeah. And uh, Asia and Africa, Asia and Africa is low. You know, Africa is the lowest, you know, because uh, Africa over here is like 2.85. Uh, and compared to that to Europe is, what are you talking about, what, 300? Two, 250. Almost like two, two, 250 times. Oh, this is the, uh, this is the daily. Let's, let's talk about the weight. Okay, well, it's better now. In terms of death, you know, the death is uh, 161 versus 272 uh, K, 2.7, you know, 2,000, almost 3,000 here. 3,000 divided by 161 is like 20 times in the uh, in, uh, death rate, you know. So uh, South America suffer the most. And uh, North America and uh, Europe is high also, but, rather Asia. Now, you, you will argue, you know, come on, you know, this doesn't make sense, you know, not even according to the Bible. Um, I, I just want to share with you this, you know, um, maybe we can read the, the Bible together and uh, talking about the last day church. The last day church is um, 
revelations. So uh, the last day church is the Laodicean. And then if you read closely, you know, um, I know thy works that thou are neither cold or hot, I would, thou were cold or hurt. So actually Jesus one would rather prefer the church to be cold or hot, but not lukewarm. Because if uh, so then, because thou are lukewarm, so you know, right now, you know, our church attitude is lukewarm, not cold or hot. I will spill tea out, spill tea out, like <laughs> spill tea out of my mouth. So actually, the Lord won, won uh, uh, the last day church uh, and everyone, you know, to be either cold or hot, but not lukewarm. Okay. Well, you know, what's that mean? Well, cold means uh, they are like, they don't know Jesus. They, they are, they are, you know, kind of smirk at Jesus. Uh, they are secular. They are maybe avias. That's cold. That's cold to Jesus. Hot means what? They are really in love with Jesus. You know, 100% Jesus. You know, everything, everything, every time they need, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not lack. So believe in Jesus every day. You know, look to Jesus. You know, believe every word. You know, the word of uh, uh, the Bible is about Jesus. Not the, not the Bible is about Moses. Okay. So, so that is hard. You know, when we are hard to Jesus, you know, of course, uh, you know, Jesus loved that. But when uh, you are cold to Jesus, he, he actually preferred, you know, the uh, last day people to be either hot or cold. Not lukewarm, because why? Because uh, those people they are lukewarm. They think uh, I'm good enough. I'm good enough. I, I don't need anything uh, from God. You know, I I take care of myself. I can uh, dress my own garments of righteousness. Uh, I I look good in front of people. You know that kind of religion is no good. Because uh, you you know when you lukewarm, you you have no relationship with Jesus. You don't need anything from him. You you think you 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 are you think like a Pharisees. Pharisees don't need miracles. You know they think they are good enough. But what happens is uh, when people are cold, they don't know Jesus. Jesus can help them. Jesus can reach out to them. So so that's why you know you you see what happened. What happened is uh, in the last day, you know. Either you are hard for Jesus, or you know, uh, you know, he can also act, reach out to the secular people, and the secular country, you know, can will many would be safe, will many to be safe, you know. Uh, so, so you you see, so what happened is uh, those are religious country that they think they are good enough. They uh, they look to their bishop. Uh, the the pastor, the minister, the 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 clergyman, you know, the priest, and and they forgot Jesus. Jesus stand outside the door, locking, and then they just ignore him. You know, they because uh, they they are relying on the denominations, they are relying on their creed, they are they are they believe in the men's traditions. You know, they they are no different from the religious people in in the Old Testament because uh, they are focusing on ten commandments. You know, thinking uh, they they if uh, they they do not kill anybody and uh, they they talk louder than other people, somehow God has to bless them. No, Jesus want to have relationship, want to love you like a lover. Okay, Jesus will love you, want want to be closest to you, you know, more than even husband than wife. That's what Jesus is. Want to bless you, give you peace. Okay. Well, <laughs> I say enough. <laughs> so, so this is the uh, the, uh, the continental picture, and this is the uh, un un unfortunately, this is the uh, you know most of the uh, sickness uh, and death. The highest is uh, in Europe and uh, and South America. You know, 
and then turn on, you know, the secular uh, country in uh, Asia, you know, is kind of low, much lower in terms of death. You know, so it goes. Yeah. Uh, so uh, you know, we we seen that, uh, and then uh, you you look at the uh, same thing. You know, in Africa, you know, most of them are low, but uh, South Africa is way high. You know, right now the the new variant uh, called Omicron is from South Africa. Why? Because South Africa, Africa is very different from the other African country. Um, so South African and also the North Africans, you know, they are religious people, either um, in a Christian world or in a Muslim world, they have higher depth. Rather the rest of the countries, uh, you know, they have lower depth. And uh, so compared to that, South Africa is way high compared to most of the Asian country. See that? Yeah, you know, it's uh, very strange. And then uh, this is the population density, you know, this is population density, population is very dense in Singapore. And uh, turn out, you know, it's still low. It's, I think, you know, in the long run, uh, Singapore is still the lowest uh, in, uh, in terms of uh, as a country even though they are, they are so densely populated. You know, it's a very weird, you know, you cannot explain by science. You know, people try to explain this, explain that, or, or you know, which vaccine is better, you know, it's, it's baloney. Because uh, you look at, you know, uh, all the uh, European countries are on the high tier. Yeah, high tier. Or the, or the um, high tier, you know, except Finland and Norway and Iceland. But you know those are you know so thin, sparsely populated, so you know that automatically means uh, you know, it's difficult to 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 uh, uh, transmit disease, you know because um, you know there are very few people, yeah. But the rest of the Europe is uh, very high, you know. So anyway. So we have done that, and uh, so uh, we, we have seen it. You know, um, those are we have seen. So uh, we're going to talk some more. Well, we we already talked about this one. So uh, uh, and the, and and that's not it. You know, after this was uh, forty nine. Uh, uh, chapter uh, verse 22, and they are additional blessing on Joseph. So I'm going to read them. Uh, on 23, the archer have solely grieved him and sought at him and hated him, but his bow are born in strength, and the arms of his arms, hands were made strong by the hands of the mighty God of Jacob. From thence is the shepherd and the stone of Israel. Who, who is the shepherd? The shepherd. Jesus. Who is the stone of Israel? Jesus. And, and so, you know, yeah, even though, you know, a lot of uh, people grieve him, you know, Archer killed him, tried to kill him, shot at him, and hated him, and then put him on the cross. But his bow are born in strength. And then his hand makes strong by the hands of the mighty God of Jacob. Why? Because after his uh, death and burial, and then now he's risen, you know, to heavens, sitting on the right hand of the Father. Even by the God of thy Father, who shall help thee, and by the Almighty, who shall bless thee with blessing of heaven above, blessing of the deep that lie under, blessing of the breast and of the wound. You know, so, <laughs> so you, you can see, you know, this is, uh, you know, clearly he's talking about Jesus. And so in the, uh, in this uh, uh, verse, the blessing of thy father have prevailed above the blessing of my progenitors unto the uttermost bound of the everlasting hills. They shall be on the head of Joseph and on the crown of the head of him that was separate from his brethren. This is not talking about the, just the blessing of earth. This is about the everlasting hills. It's about 
you know, the, you know, <laughs> the, the blessing even more than, you know, all the other progenitors, you know, before Jacob. So, you know, that is only one thing, you know, this, this, um, a few words that he's talking about Jesus. Jesus, Joseph is a picture of Jesus, so the blessing will be on Jesus. But anyway, now coming to an end, you know, I'm going to share with you this. Um, you know, this because this is the end of the uh, chapter 50, is the end of uh, Genesis, the book of Genesis. And I'm going to read, okay, now because uh, 49, Jacob is gone, by 50, it, that's the end of the Genesis. And uh, so Joseph that said something uh, really touching. And Joseph dwelt in Egypt, he and his father's house, and Joseph lived in 110 years. And Joseph saw even children of the third generation, and children also of Micaiah, the son of Manasseh, were brought up and born Joseph. And and Joseph said unto his brethren, I die. And God will surely visit you and bring you out of the land unto the land which he swore to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob. And Joseph took an oath of the children of Israel, saying, God will surely visit you, and you shall carry up my bones from hands. So Joseph died being 110 years old, and they embalmed him and he was put in a coffin in Egypt. That is the end of the book of Genesis. So I'm going to ask you a question because uh, you have been patient with me. I'm going to ask you, when did God visit the children of Israel? And when did they touch his own then? Very important question because that's what Joseph said. Joseph both uh, prophesied that in time they are going to go back to the land um, or, you know, that uh, was promised to Abraham, to Isaac, and Jacob. So, you know, in the short term, after 400 some years, that happened. But later on, after, you know, G Jesus uh, also after 2,000 years after Jesus, they also returned to the land. So this is a double uh, fulfillment of the prophecy, you know, the land. But also, God will surely visit you and you shall carry up my bones from fans. When, when did that happen? This is talking about Jesus. Jesus came among them. God, the Lord, came among them, visit them. That's the only time Jesus did. And then also, they did touch his bones. Why? Because Jesus, when he was on the cross, um, he was, before that, you know, he was striked so much, you know, that uh, there's no more skin, you know, and then his bones uh, were staring out. And so when he died, you know, the, uh, the, uh, the, the, you know, uh, the, you know, his body was taken from the cross, you know, with the wound on the, on uh, the hand and also on the back, on, on so many places. And then he, he was taken to the coffin, I mean, to the, to the burial next door, you know, in the, in the tomb. And so, you know, this is a, a prophecy about, you know, he came and he visited them and then he actually died there for them and for us. So that is the last part of the book of Genesis. From the first verse of the Bible, Genesis 1-1 to the last, the chapter 50, verse 26, um, is all about Jesus. Joseph is a picture of Jesus. So uh, before we're going to have the communion, I'm going to um, give you a chance to see the tomb of uh, the tomb uh, in Israel. Uh, 
uh, that was uh, somehow still there. So uh, that was the tomb of uh, Israel, uh, because uh, he was um, in Egypt, uh, you know, uh, for four hundred some years. So uh, he came back to Israel, um, uh, like you know, like thirty five hundred years, thirty five hundred years, about. You know, So uh, this is the tomb of Israel. I mean, uh, <laughs> Joseph. This is the tomb of Joseph. And uh, they, uh, they, they, uh, you know, have been uh, guarded by the, uh, the uh, Palestinian uh, for, for a long time. And um, so uh, for a number of years, you know, they are fighting each other, uh, try to kill each other in the, in the local uh, places. And uh, so right now, you know, um, the, 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 the Israeli army uh, basically control it. And then, uh, and uh, so uh, the, uh, the children of Israel are, you know, kind of used to it, you know. And uh, so uh, this is, this is the uh, looking down from, uh, I think this is the garrison. This is the, uh, and the Mount Ebo over here. And then so looking down, you know, this is, um, the Shikin Valley in the middle, and then somewhere over here is uh, the, the uh, that tomb. Yeah, I think it's this one. And uh, they were enclosed, you know, uh, uh, you know, all these are Palestinian. Uh, this is a Palestinian city, uh, but you know, this one, you know, they uh, by the army, you know, they they control it, you know, because uh, they say, well, this is the the tomb of uh, the of the ancestor of uh, children of Israel, and uh, so now uh, I'm going to show you uh, this uh, is only uh, uh, a few hundred meter from uh, the uh, the um, where was Jacob. See, this is uh, inside a Greek Orthodox uh, church, you know, the Jacob's well. And, uh, and, and uh, so uh, the two is uh, uh, in not, not far away from each other, you know, it's uh, something like. Uh, somehow I, I mess it up, but uh, yeah, so it's uh, about a few hundred meter. Jacob's well, and then uh, the tomb of Joseph. Remember in chapter four, they were all there. <laughs> Still there, yeah. <laughs> so thirty five hundred years ago, uh, you know, and they're fight, fighting over that, you know. So, uh, I'm sorry for them, but uh, you know, we, we have to look unto Jesus. You know, it's not for those things. You know, I, I don't care about those. You know, those are, are very sad. You know that uh, they still try to hold on to that. So um, this is the first. Uh, account of the bread and wine in Genesis 14. And I'm going to read that. And then after that, we're going to read Revelations also about the bread and wine. In Genesis 14, 
uh, verse 17, and the king of Sodom went out to meet him after his return from the slaughter of Chephtoma. And of the kings that were with him at the valley of Shiran, which is the king's there, the king's reign. And Melchizedek, king of Salem, brought forth bread and wine, and he was the priest of the Most High God. And he blessed Abraham, Abram, and said, Blessed be Abram of the Most High God, possessor of heavens and earth. And blessed be the Most High God, which had delivered the enemies into thy hand. He gave him tithes of all. So, so this is uh, like um, one of the first account of the bread and wine, you know, and he's the priest of the Most High God. And it's for blessing, 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 blessing the person and blessing the God. So uh, when, we, when we receive the Holy Communion, it's blessing us and blessing the Lord, you know, because uh, the glory of the Lord, um, is receiving the blessing when we, you know, are with him and then, you know, and then sit with him. And uh, so now, you know, we were going to work on that. Uh, but before that, we're going to read the, um, you know, one of the last one of the talking about the blessing of the bread and wine. Uh, Revelation 6, 6, and I heard a voice in the midst of the four feet say, a measure of wheat for a penny and three measures of barley for a penny and see thou heard not the oil and the wine. And when he had opened the fourth seal, I heard the voice of the fourth beast saying, come and see. And I looked and behold a pale horse and his name that said on him was death and hell followed with him. And power was given unto them over the fourth part of the earth to kill with Saul and with the hunger and with death and with the beast of the earth. Now, uh, these uh, are in the tribulation time. Uh, but we're not going to be in it. But still, you know, the Lord leave it on, on the book of Revelation uh, to clearly say that the wheat, the, the grain, the wine, and the oil is for blessing. Why? Because uh, after this was brought out, and uh, it was also brought out the, the next seal and the beast, and it is a pale horse which represents the death and uh, kill, hunger, and uh, you know, all kinds of you know, bad stuff. So the reason why it was put ahead of it is uh, so those people that are going through the tribulations, they might not be a believer yet. Uh, maybe the Jewish uh, missionary have not reached out to them or whatever. And somehow if uh, they understood it, then uh, you know that maybe uh, they can avoid this. Uh, they can they can uh, you know have way to deal with uh, the pale horse and so forth. Why? Because this is from God. The holy communion is from God. The anointing oil is from God. So why right now we're going to close uh, with the uh, holy communion. Lord Jesus, I'm thankful that um, uh, lift up the the bread if you have. Uh, Lord Jesus, I'm, I'm uh, thankful that uh, we have uh, this study, that uh, you are blessing us on this uh, Thanksgiving holiday, and um, and that uh, you have the word of Jesus Christ and the uh, God's word to show forth that uh, you are the everlasting Lord from, uh, from the first time and uh, the first and the last. Thank you, Lord Jesus. You are the Alpha and the Maker. You are the Alec and Kev. Lord, and I'm thankful because uh, you have done all the works necessary for our blessing and all the works are to reverse all the curse, all the sin, all the punishments, all everything that's bad from the first Adam because you are the second Adam and uh, you have done it for us and by your strife we are healed. And uh, so all the healing uh, would, would come on us because uh, you have died for us. Thank you, Lord Jesus. And uh, so we have everlasting life. And uh, as you are in heaven, so are we in this world. So uh, we take the comfort. We uh, have your uh, bread and we uh, have your cup uh, uh, to, uh, to be a blessing to us. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. After the
new, you hold up the cup and say, this is the cup of the new covenant. And by this cup, you remember our sins no more. All the past, present, and future sins are forgiven because Jesus has really done it for us. And I'm the righteousness of God in Christ. I think uh, we can stand upright, not because of her doing, but because of your, her faith. And the uh, same thing for us. We have faith in you, Jesus Christ, and uh, we believe in you, not that uh, believing the man's righteousness, but by the righteousness of God in Christ, and that we have, uh, we become righteous. Thank you, Lord Jesus. You freely give it to us, and I, I, I thank you. In Jesus' name, Amen. So, in closing, in closing, we're going to have a closing prayer. Lord Jesus, I'm just thankful for another week that uh, you bless us with our God's word. In the name of Jesus, uh, by, by your name, that I'm, I'm praying for blessing on everyone. And uh, by, uh, at the sound of my voice, I bless everyone that uh, watch uh, this video uh, and, uh, and that uh, they, uh, they be blessed with uh, healing, protections, provisions, and uh, joy and peace. And that uh, shall long peace be on them and salvation for eternal life because of Jesus Christ. And I'm also praying that for also for their families. The, uh, all the audience, their families are also blessed because uh, you, you promise and blessing and everlasting blessing and ever abundance of blessing on, uh, on, on them. And so I pray that all this in, in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Okay, thank you guys. Uh, see you guys.